This is my PC, and some of you said in our last video that you didn't think it matched with my new setup, which made me very sad. Also, as cool as it looks, it's getting a little bit due for an upgrade. It's got an Intel i9-12900K along with an RTX 3090, and I know what you're thinking, Josh, how is that possibly due for an upgrade? Well, for people like me who do extreme gaming, I could always do with that extra kick, so I can really crank up those settings, increase the draw distance. Beautiful. For real though, I spent a huge amount of time editing videos, we film everything in 4K, so every little bit of performance counts. Now, Intel just released this, the Core i9-4900K, it's an absolute unit, and they offered to sponsor this video, so let's build a new PC. Now, every PC build starts off with a case, and honestly, I had trouble choosing because I wasn't sure whether to go mini ITX to save some space on the desk, but eventually the desire for aesthetics overwhelmed me, and I caved and ordered this. So, for the case, I went for the Fantex NV5, I did have a look at the NV5, NV7 and the NV9, but honestly, they're just too freaking big. Like, I don't need a case that big. I'm not planning on water cooling in this. Turns out, it's quite annoying when you want to upgrade your GPU and you have to drain the entire system and redo all of your tubing. So yeah, I think this should be perfect. Now you're probably wondering what kind of motherboard is worthy of housing CPU royalty such as the Intel Core i9-4900K. This is the MSI MEG Z790 Ace Max, and it's basically like taking a regular Z790 and turning things up to 11. It's got all the USB ports, dual 2.5 gigabit LAN, it's even got Wi-Fi 7, but perhaps most importantly, high quality power delivery. So we're gonna be able to overclock the CPU, the memory, the GPU, squeeze out all that extra performance. But anyway, Intel Core i9-4900K, what makes this the ultimate CPU for a system like this? Well, it's got 24 cores, 32 threads, that's eight performance cores, 16 efficiency cores. So multitasking, gaming, streaming, recording, editing, it's the best of the best. Now, as I mentioned, this is basically gonna be a multi-purpose system split between heavy productivity work like video editing. Along with gaming, I play a lot of newer AAA titles, so I'll take any performance boost I can get in either of these scenarios. Now, I actually went ahead and grabbed the contact frame out of the old build so that we can use it in this one, because of course the socket is the same, and hopefully this should help us to get some really good temps. With that said, we'll get the old mountain hardware removed and install the new anti-bend bracket. Now, of course, there is also the Intel i7-14700K, so if you're more so interested in gaming, you can save some money and still get insane performance. Now, one thing I am very excited to try out is this memory. This is the XPG Lancer DDR5, and it's got crazy speeds up to 8,000 mega transfers per second. That's like the fastest memory I've ever used. It's got Intel XMP 3.0 support. So once we've got the PC up and running, we'll be able to test it out. Onto storage. Now, I must admit, guys, I'm a little bit of a digital hoarder. So I have three NVMe M.2 drives. This first one is just a one terabyte. That's for Windows. The second one is for video editing. So that's a two terabyte drive. And then I have a four terabyte for my games library. Now, one thing I really like that MSI has been doing recently is the addition of these quick release mechanisms for the M.2 drives. You don't need any screws and it just makes installation so much easier. Oh, I just noticed, I think this cover actually has RGB because there's a little connector right here. I think that's the first time I've seen that. I don't know if I showed you guys earlier, but check out the back of the motherboard. It has this awesome looking plate on it. It's time we had a look inside the case. Wow, oh, it's actually quite roomy in there. And then we can get the motherboard installed, ready to install the rest of the components. So I was debating what fans to go for, and because this is one of those glass box style cases, you normally end up seeing the ugly side of the fan, assuming you do a side intake. Now to solve this problem, a few companies have started doing reverse style fans, and these ones from Thermaltake are super cool, because not only are they magnetic and daisy chainable, but you can also just pop the fan off and swap the blade for a reverse style blade. That way you can have your cake and eat it. Now, while we're on the subject of cooling, let's check out the AIO. So this is the MSI MAG Core Liquid E360. So 360 millimeter rad, big cold plate to cover any off-center CPU hotspots, increased density micro channels, and you can actually rotate the pump block cover as well. So orientation isn't gonna be an issue. With most of the parts and box, it was time to get to work putting the rest of the PC together. Now, both these side fans and the bottom fan are using reverse fan blades so that we don't have to look at the ugly side of the fan. Now, for the sake of consistency, I also decided to swap out the fans that came with the AIO for the same Thermaltake swap fans. I will say, despite this being the smallest of the NV series cases, it has plenty of room for radiators and such. Quick bit of thermal paste so we can get the block installed. Making good use of the rotating pump block cover here, I really wish more coolers had this feature. Now, there's space for three hard drives in this case, and yes, I will be using all of them. There's two 8TB drives going in here, along with a 20TB, for a total of 40 
53 terabytes, including the three M.2 SSDs. Now with a system like this, the last thing you want to skimp out on is the power supply. So we're going with the MSI A1000G. It's a 1000 watt gold rated PSU, so it should be plenty for what we need. I also grabbed some orange cable extensions as well, just to kind of tie in slightly with the other orange accents in the setup. 20 minutes of cable management later, and we can get the rear side panel replaced. And then it's finally time to install the GPU. And of course, the only real option here for a complete overkill system like this is the mighty RTX 4090. Again, we're going MSI here to match the rest of the rig. We'll finish up getting that all slotted into the socket, secured and plugged in. And with that, the system is complete. Can't forget the peel. I have to say, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Here is the final result. Now, of course, the real question here is how much better is the performance versus the previous PC? Let's find out. Now, since I spend about 70% of my time doing productivity related tasks like video editing, the CPU is very important to me. Now, I run a synthetic benchmark first off just to get a baseline comparison. Here's the results from Cinebench. So you can see we've got a pretty significant boost in multi-core performance in particular. Now, what does this translate to in real world performance? Well, I edit all my videos in Premiere Pro and during that process, I'll often need to render out clips and sometimes if I'm doing a big project with proxies, it can be hundreds of gigabytes of footage. And this takes a lot of time, so really any improvement here would be great. Now to test this, I took a 10 minute piece of 4K footage, exported it, and as you can see, the new system completed this in just two minutes, which is 50% faster than the previous one. This is gonna save a lot of time in the long run. I've got a couple more synthetic benchmarks for you guys to check out. So 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra is up first. As you can see, it's seen some really big jumps in performance here. As with Cinebench, it's looking like roughly a 30 to 40% score increase on the CPU score. And obviously the GPU absolutely crushes these kind of tests as well. And then with Time Spike Extreme, very similar story, an increase on both the CPU and GPU scores with a combined total of pretty much double the previous system. Now as cool as it is to see scores increase, let's check out what the system can actually do in real world gaming scenarios. So I benchmarked a few different games I've been playing recently. Bear in mind this is at 3440 by 1440 p resolution because I game on an ultra wide as 175 hertz and I like to max out every set. With that said, we'll start off with Baldur's Gate 3. So like I said, max settings here looking absolutely beautiful. Again, averages of around 146 FPS. Now, obviously frame rates in games like this aren't as critical as in competitive shooters, but it just makes for an incredibly smooth and enjoyable experience all around. Hitman 3 is up next. So I'm actually running ray tracing on this to try and tax the GPU as much as possible. Still extremely high frame rates nonetheless with an average of 168 FPS. On to Ghostwire Tokyo. Again, max settings and ray tracing here with an average of 154 FPS. And believe it or not, this resolution, it can actually be quite a challenge to get the 4090 to 100% usage. So a powerful CPU such as the 4900K becomes all the more important to feed the GPU as many frames as possible. Now, this PC is already ridiculously powerful. However, I do want to show you guys what a potential overclock might look like using Intel's new AI assist tool, because it's actually pretty freaking cool, especially if you're someone who's worried about how to overclock. So basically, you download Intel's extreme tune-in utility, boot it up, and you'll see a tab called AI assist. Now, bear in mind, this is currently only supported on the i9-4900K, but anyway, click on that and then click on the characterize. What this will do is analyze your entire system and use that information to suggest overclock values. After it's finished doing its thing, you can review the results and hit apply. And it's as simple as that. From here, you can run benchmarks and stress tests to make sure that everything's stable and that you're not thermal throttling. Now, I did run a stress test, and even though I'm not running a custom loop, I surprisingly didn't see any throttling, so that was good. I will say it's kind of interesting to see AI trickle its way into overclocking because it's something that a lot of people are nervous to do but at the same time you could be leaving some performance on the table so a one-click overclock majorly simplifies and solves a lot of this very cool stuff anyway that'll do it for this one now if you want to check out any of the parts used in this build I'll drop them down below in the description including of course the mighty Intel Core i9 4900k and remember if you're more interested in just gaming the i7 14700k is quite a bit cheaper but an equally awesome option especially with those extra e cores versus previous gen but yeah that's the new build again shout out to intel for helping us create the ultimate creator gaming pc hope you guys enjoyed drop a like if you did hit that subscribe button if you're new and we'll catch you all in the next one